Sorry, dumbass. It's not being a scientist. Scientists are supposed to go off facts. Not draw crazy conclusions off of a few fossils they find and blow it out of proportion and make it out to the, where they're a half, uh, half ape and they, or an ape that can walk upright. Science does rely on facts, Nick. Um, but what, I'm th what I think you're doing here is you are confusing something. You're confusing two very, very different concepts. Okay? You are confusing the facts that scientists know about, the things that science knows, with the things that you know. Okay? You haven't heard of it, therefore it doesn't exist. You don't know about it, therefore nobody knows about it. That's the mistake you're making, and you're probably going to deny that. But it's absolutely true. Okay? You've said over and over again, there are no missing links, or there are no transitional fossils, or whatever, however you worded it. Okay? You've, you've made that claim. Um, when in reality, there are tens of thousands of transitionals between every single major grouping of tetrapods and invertebrates and stuff. We've got, we've got the fossils. You don't know they exist, so therefore you make the claim that, that they don't exist. I'm going to say this, and I don't mean this to sound mean. But, you know, if what science knew was in any way equivalent to what you knew, we would not even be out of the dark ages, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. There's unlimited amounts of evidence that show creation, but evolutionary scientists would rather believe that an ape that only had, many even have half the bones of the ape, didn't have the feet bones of the ape, but they found human footprints, and they said, oh, well, it was a ape walking upright. Tons of evidence for creation, Nick. Um, would you care to provide even one example of that ton of evidence? Just one? One simple fact that creation can explain that uh, evolution can't? Um, I know you can't do it. I'm going to show you something here. Now, what you're seeing here, these are some of my creation science books. Um... I'm going to tell you, I have read every single one of those books, every one of them. Um, some of them many more than once. Um, I have all of the classics, and I don't have all of this, every creation science book out there, but I've got a, a very good collection, and that's probably, well, far less than half of the ones that I have total. I've also got Creation Science Quarterly Magazine. I've got lots of lots of back issues of that. I got So I've got a lot of uh, creation material, and I've read it all, and the conclusion from... Re um, in reading all of that, I haven't found one, not one, single point in the, any of those books. Not one. Not, not some. Not a single point. But that even made me pause for a second and go, that's kind of a good point. I wonder what the answer to that is. Not one. They're outright lies, misrepresentation of the data, quote mines, none of it. I mean, there's none of it that would make even anybody and any educated person even pause for a second, okay? Now, throughout this video, uh, you seem to have the idea that without a foot bone, um, or without those tracks, we would have no way of knowing whether or not this fossil walked upright or didn't walk upright. Um, that seems to be the idea, and I understand where you got that from. I've seen a number of related claims. You, 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 you kind of screw up the claim anyhow, but I, I know the origin of wh where your concept is coming from, or where your idea is coming from. But I'm going to show you something. Um, there are a lot of ways for us to tell if an animal walked on two legs or walked on four. Okay, And I'm going to show you probably the first... Um, this was the very first ape man ever discovered um, back in 1924. Uh, this is how the discoverer knew that he was not looking at an ape fossil or at a monkey bone, that he was actually looking at a biped, a upright walking possible human ancestor. Okay. Now I'm going to show you here. This is the skull of a common chimpanzee. Okay. So this is a common chimp. This is an ape. Now, if you turn over the skull and you look on the bottom of it, you see that there's a hole. This is called the foramen magnum. This is, I know it's a big word, but this is where the spinal cord enters the brain. This is how the brain communicates with the rest of the body through that hole. All right. Now notice where this hole is. It's right here. See it? Put my finger in. 
it comes out at an angle this way because if you see a chimp walking, they're like they're quadrupeds, okay? Do you, do you see how that is? So the spine leaves the skull at an angle. Now I'm going to contrast this with a human skull. Here is a human skull, okay? Note where the form and magnum is on the human skull. It's directly underneath because the spinal cord of a human goes straight up. You see? Because we're walking upright. So, look at that. Oh, I'm not going to try to juggle two of them at once. Okay, just understand that. So, that's how when we find a skull of a ape-like, human-like, whatever it happens to look like, if this part of the skull is intact, and it very often is, we can actually tell whether or not it walked upright or not based on that alone. No feet, no legs required, no hips required, no anything. That is probably the best evidence that Lucy Auschwitz afarensis was indeed a biped. Okay. Now, here is an Auschwitz skull. This is afarensis. Look where the hole is. Straight down. These were obligate bipeds. Okay. They could not walk like a chimpanzee walks. These walked on two legs. Now that doesn't mean that they are ancestor of humans. Um, you know, you, you, I'm not. None of that proves that there are ancestors or that they're ape men or anything. But it does prove that whatever you want to call them, you want to call them an ape. That's fine. Um, but they walked on two legs, very very similar to how we do. Now that's just one. Um, with this species and Artipithecus, in fact, we have knee joints. We have hip bones, and we do have lots and lots of feet. Um, so, we, especially of Australopithecus alfarensis, we have a complete foot skeleton of, of these guys, proving that they walked on two legs just like us, and proving that those tracks at the Latoli ash beds were made by this species and no other. Okay? They're not, they're not being scientists, okay? They're, they're being dumb, stupid bitches that don't even care about science. They don't even care about uh, furthering our knowledge. They just want to make up stupid bullcrap so they don't have to be scared at night and cry on their pillow. And they go to sleep. Really, Nick? You're going to assert that we made up the theory of evolution so that we get some comfort, we don't have to be afraid of the dark? Are you seriously going to assert that that's why this theory exists? So that we don't cry ourselves to sleep on our pillows? Um... There's a, do you have any idea how, okay, you're asserting that there's this old man that lives in the sky that made you and loved you, and, and when you die, he's going to take you up to heaven, and you can live forever and ever and ever and ever with him, right? Okay, you believe that for purely logical reasons. We, however, believe that when we die, we rot, that all life on this planet has a common chain of descent. Um, that we op that the world and the universe operates under completely and totally cold and merciless natural principles. We believe that for comfort, but you believe your um, whole concept for purely pragmatic, purely logical reasons, right? I, I, I can't even believe you said that. Even the Big Bang Theory, but there's problems with the Big Bang Theory, but they still believe it. But it's just going off facts. Uh, it's not going off facts, is it? Problems with the Big Bang, Nick. I'm going to challenge it. Here's the challenge for you that you're going to fail at. I'm going to tell you that right now. Name one. You name one problem with the Big Bang Theory. Name it. You tell me. You you give me one actual problem. And I don't mean some made-up piece of crap thing from Kent Hovind about spinning galaxies and crap like that. I mean an actual scientific something that scientists look at and scratch their head and go, huh, that is kind of a problem. Name it. Did anybody hear about the new development? They finally answered the question of which came first, the egg or the chicken? Guess what they found out? <laughs>